This episode of Hands on Windows is presented free. If you'd like the rest of the episodes filled with great Windows tips and tricks, join Club Twit for $7 a month, or you can get just this podcast for $2.99 a month. Head on over to twit.tv slash club twit for more information. Coming up next on Hands on Windows, we're going to take a look at what you should look for when you're choosing a web browser. I think you should use multiple browsers, and I feel pretty strongly that you shouldn't use Microsoft Edge, but we'll take a look at all of the major contenders. It's coming up next. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This This is Twit. Twit. The following show is brought to you through the generosity of people like you. Thanks. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Thorat. And this week, we're going to take a look at various web browsers and how you might go about picking the one that's right for you. Um, as you know, I'm sure Microsoft includes Edge, its own web browser in Windows 11. Um, Edge is not ideal. I, I feel like I haven't been too shy about that fact. But when Microsoft first announced this product, it was supposed to be a stripped down, kind of minimalistic product that got out of the way, kind of like Safari on Mac OS. I really like that idea. I really wish that's what Edge was, you know, this version of Chrome that had all the Google junk pulled out of it. And that's not what it is. What's happened over time is Microsoft has really junked it up with a lot of superfluous features. Um, It has just as bad of a tracking system built into it that Google Chrome does. Um, There's a big UI about how it blocks trackers, but the reality is it really doesn't do much to block, um, you know, the, the most dangerous trackers that are online. And it's... Honestly, I find it to run pretty slowly compared to other browsers. So I think it makes sense for anyone using Windows to kind of take a look around. Um, If you look at Stack Counter, which is the only major source of this information now, unfortunately, on desktop, everybody knows Chrome is number one and by a wide margin. At the time of this recording, it was about 66% usage share. Uh, That compares to 10% for Microsoft Edge, about 5.3% for Firefox, which is sad. That one has fallen hard in recent years, and about 4% for Opera. And then there are other modern browsers, including some that I think are fantastic and some including the one I use, uh, but they're also RANs from kind of a, a usage perspective. So maybe we can change that, right? So you should try to find the browser that's right for you. Um, and by the way, it's possible you will look at all these browsers, look at some subset of these browsers and you'll say, hey, whatever edge is the one for me. And, and that's fine as long as you take precautions. So um, I also think that most people should have at least two browsers on their uh, computer at all times. Um, I happen to use Brave, but I also use Edge from time to time uh, because it's installed there and Chrome as well. So, um, but here are the five, I'm going to call them the best choices. I'm not sure that's kind of subjective, but um, number one, of course, is for the conformist to the audience is a Google Chrome. So Google, everyone understands Google Chrome. I mean, there's not like a lot going on here. The thing is, Google Chrome, like most of the browsers that I'm going to discuss here, is not very uh, private or secure by default. So I've installed a bunch of um, extensions here, which you can see. But if you go to the EFF has an interesting website called Cover Your Tracks. So if you run this site, it will look at how what this browser does to block trackers. And this is something I run against all the browsers. I run against the browsers, just uh, the, the default configuration and then different configurations, what it looks like with and without um, certain extensions and so forth. And then I've, I've tried to find the, the set of extensions that maybe makes the browser as safe as it can be. So for example, you can see here by default, what this finds is that this browser does absolutely nothing to block tracking ads. It does nothing to block invisible trackers and it doesn't protect you at all from fingerprinting, meaning your browser has a unique fingerprint, which is one of the many ways that these advertising agencies can follow you around the web and learn your habits and see what you're doing. Um, if you were to ins- uh, go back to those extensions, actually uh, the ad blocker is just really about blocking ads for the most part, but privacy badger is the big one. And the one that I strongly recommend If you go back and install those two extensions in any web browser uh, and then run this test again, what you're going to find is that you uh, it is blocking uh, both of those forms of trackers that I mentioned earlier. And you have a you you do not have a unique fingerprint. Um, I'll give it a second here to come up. Um, I'm sorry. This one is (laughs) I'm sorry. This one actually does have a unique fingerprint. so you're, you still have like this is this is pretty much what you can do 
in Chrome, right? This is what you, you're going to see here is going to vary from browser to browser. Um, this is not ideal, but if you're going to use Chrome, at least do this, right? Um, Chrome is compatible. It's, it actually performs pretty well. They've been doing an okay job with uh, memory management in recent years, whatever, but this is not the browser that I would recommend. Um, the number two browser, and these are not in order of preference, these are just in some, there's some random order rather, is a Microsoft Edge. And I'm going to run the beta version here because this has the new UI and I think it looks better uh, at the time of this recording. Um, and there are reasons to use this. This has some neat integration with the uh, Bing Chat AI functionality on the web, including this cool um, Dolly based image creator application, uh, which is you know, frankly, kind of neat. Like I get the people like that kind of stuff, but here too, again, you're going to want to install those two extensions. Um, I do have them installed. So, uh, this thing will protect you from tracking, uh, if you have those extensions installed, this is kind of the, the bare minimum. I think the new UI here is kind of nice. There are some other browsers that have a similar UI actually, but it's nice to see edge adopting this, taking on the windows 11 look and feel. So, um, not my choice, <laughs> but, um, but there it is. Um, brave is the most interesting one, one to me because it is the most secure and private out of the box. Um, I actually use brave, so I'm going to just bring up a blank window. So you don't have to look at all my stuff, but this one, uh, actually I'll just go EFF cover your tracks. I'll just, this is, I do not have, um, privacy badger or uh, the ad blocker installed in this because this browser provides that functionality by default. It's a fairly minimalist browser. Um, there's a couple of little things I turn off uh, when I first install it, um, but it doesn't do a lot of the, it actually does have a sidebar, but it doesn't do a lot of the exploding UI stuff that we'll see in, uh, in other websites or other web browsers. Um, but here you can see this is the ideal situation, right? So we're blocking uh, tracking ads. We're blocking invisible trackers and your browser has a randomized fingerprint, which means that advertisers cannot follow you around the internet. This is, this is ideal. Um, and this is without any extensions whatsoever. So that's why I use, that's part of why I use it. It's a big part of why I use it, but also the performance is fantastic. Your browser performs better when you're not being tracked and we don't, we're not loading all this extraneous stuff. Right. And it doesn't have a lot of superfluous UI, just kind of bogging it down. Um, that's my, that's kind of where I'm at. I, I realize everyone's a little different, but I, I like it for that reason. Um, but this thing is private and secure out of the box, which I really like. Um, for people who love to customize, like love, love, love to customize, um, Vivaldi is another Chromium-based browser. Um, it's very similar to Opera, um, which, or it was actually, but Opera just got a major update. Um, it's a little busy. Um, even if you go into something like settings, for example, it's like, wow, like every one of these things has this massive number of options. To me, this is a little overwhelming. Um, there is a, this thing can be made to be pretty secure and private out of the box, but you have to configure it correctly when you go through the initial setup. Um, I did do that. There's an option during setup where it asks you how it wants to, you, how you want to handle blocking. You want to block trackers and ads. And when you do this, you get that kind of green light effect in the EFF uh, cover your track site. So that's there at least. I mean, that's, that's worth knowing about, but there's a lot of panels and apps and, you know, sidebars and lots of stuff going on here. It's a busy browser. Um, but it's, uh, that may appeal to you, right? A lot, some people are really into it. They also have built in a mail calendar and RSS feeder apps, uh, which is kind of interesting. Those things, uh, can appear in that sidebar by default. So Again, not not my thing. Uh, and I don't like the kind of ad look of this or whatever, but it's fairly secure and private. And uh, again, I think some people are just really into all that customization stuff. Um, number five is Opera. So Opera was just recently updated to something called Opera One. Now this is going to look a lot like the Vivaldi we just looked at, and it kind of does by default, which is a little bit of a turnoff. Um, but this browser is being sold as the first browser to have uh, native AI built into it, which is kind of interesting. I know Edge has some AI stuff, but this is kind of native to the browser. And I, maybe the right word is unique to the browser. Um, 
It also has a new modular design and a new architecture. And so under the covers, even though it's based on Chromium, they've actually architected it to be faster than most other browsers today. Oh, I think other browsers will eventually catch up to that as well. Um, you do want to install those two extensions. I think if you look here, you'll see I have Adblock Plus and Privacy Badger installed here. So you're going to want to do that at least. Uh, but the AI stuff is interesting, right? So you can go to this Aria uh, pane and you can start a chat. And the thing I like to do with... Um, I always do this test because Microsoft did it when they first announced um, Bing Chat. And also because I actually own an apartment there. But, um, you know, pr give me a five-day itinerary for Mexico City. So this is a place I know pretty well. And uh, I'm always fascinated by the results. In fact, I've been testing Aria on a couple of different computers. And uh, I'm interested to see what it does here because the results have been kind of all over the map. Um, and so we'll see how this thing floats out. So, yeah, this is completely different, uh, the order. Usually it starts off in the center historico. That's a good place to start, by the way. Um, and th those are pretty solid choices and everything. One of the things that Microsoft's um, AI did early on was they would recommend things that were for one day that were in opposite parts of the city. And actually, you can see a little bit. Actually, you can see that right here. So Polanco and Milko, which I never pronounced correctly, do not correct me on that, <laughs> um, are on complete opposite ends of Mexico City, which is one of the biggest cities in North. Actually, it is the biggest city in North America and the, it's like the second biggest city in the Americas. You don't want to spend one day going back and forth to those two things like this is a this is a ridiculous uh, set of things to ask, you know, Coyoacan and San Angel are actually very close to each other. So, um, that's fine. Um, it's weird that you would start day one. This place is way outside of Mexico city. It's over an hour outside. Um, that's kind of a weird thing to do on the first day. So this is a, a good example of like, I, you know, I don't know what they were thinking. Um, but that's, you know, that's the, the fun of AI, I guess, but what makes this native maybe is you say, you're, I mean, I'm not browsing the web here, but if I brought up, you know, let's say I was, I was on some site and, and maybe I had a question about something like I just make something up. It doesn't really matter, but I'm on whatever. Maybe I'm on a news site or something. And I say, you know, I want to, um, I want to do, I want to know something, but I don't want to leave this thing. Right. So you can actually hit uh, control plus slash and you get this kind of, it's like a command line in the middle of the browser. And you can type in what you want to know. So you could say like, you know, when was Microsoft uh, formed? And then it opens in that panel on the side and you can pin it so that these things are side by side, right? And this is a lot of the ways, a lot of these kind of UIs work this way. It's kind of a sidebar um, and it, it lets you do this AI thing over on the side while you're doing um, browsing over on the other side. So that's, that's kind of cool. Um, I did not mention... Firefox, right? And I'm not even sure if I have Firefox installed on the system. So I do good. <laughs> so Firefox, I, I think is the, it's kind of the, uh, it's the product I want to recommend, right? Um, the reason I can't is I feel like they've gone in a different direction than the rest of the world. So on Windows, they're the only major browser that doesn't use the Chromium backend. So they have to keep their browser rendering and JavaScript engines up to date and try to keep them going as well as what the rest of the world is doing. And that's kind of a daunting task. It's the reason Microsoft stopped doing that and went with Chromium for the new version of Microsoft Edge. Um, they're, you know, the usage share is slipping. They don't have any um, integrated um, capabilities for progressive web apps anymore, which is crazy to me. All of the other major browsers that I mentioned so far allow you to install web apps to your computer so that they act like apps, which is a neat, util you know, a neat capability. So you can access web apps without the browser junk around. It looks like, looks and feels like a native app. Uh, Firefox does not do that. Um, Firefox is pretty secure out of the box. You're still going to want to install those extensions. Um, but it's it's a little more secure than the Chrome Edge uh, opera, operas of the world. But uh, you're still going to want extensions to ensure your privacy and security. Um, I, I I feel bad about this one because it's it's a, a it's a modern looking browser. You can see it's got that kind of modern look and feel to it, which is neat. It's got kind of a minimalist look. The performance is actually pretty good. Um, I just feel like they're kind of an all saran at this point, and I I feel bad about that, but. Um, it's certainly something you might want to look into and, uh, Firefox does appeal uh, to some people for sure. Um, there's also a dark horse choice coming down the pike, uh, a company called DuckDuckGo, which makes a, a, a secure private 
search engine and mobile app, and they have various extensions and things, is coming out with a web browser. And it's available as we record this in a early beta version on Windows. Um, this is something that could one day, for me at least, rival um, Brave, right? So it's minimalistic, secure out of the box. You go to cover your tracks, all green, perfect. You don't have to install any extensions, which is good because you can't <laughs> because one of the limitations of this first beta version is there are no extensions. So uh, that alone, I think, will make it a non-starter for a lot of people. Um, one of the things I really like about this browser, though, is when you go to YouTube, um, it blocks tracking. Actually, that's a good example. It blocks tracking. Um, it blocks, I'm sorry, it blocks tracking on YouTube. So one of the things that YouTube does, because it's part of Google, is it, it knows what you watch. And then it forms uh, recommendations based on what you watch. That sounds like a good idea. But if you use Google or Chrome, a lot, if you use YouTube a lot like I do, you will have seen it, like the same videos over and over and over again. And so they have this integrated player called Duck Player, which uh, you can not use or not use. It's up to you. You can see it's got kind of a neat UI where it blocks out the rest of the page. If you watch this on YouTube, you know, you've, you've seen this. It's a really busy UI. It's got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, but if you watch it in Duck Player, you get this kind of nice thing. There's no tracking, which is really cool. Um, I really like this UI a lot. This is, uh, you know, not the reason to use this browser per se, but... Um, I, I haven't, I can't confirm this, but, um, and of course right now I'm signed in with my account. So I, I have a, uh, a YouTube music account that I pay for. So I get YouTube without ads, right? One of the issues with YouTube, the video site is a lot of ads. Um, I, si I, I signed into, or went into YouTube without signing in originally. I went and played a bunch of videos. I never saw any ads in this. I don't know 100% that it blocks all ads, but it seems to block ads. That too is interesting, right? Um, so I think this is a, this is going to be an interesting browser. It's just not ready yet. It doesn't have a lot of the tab features you see in other browsers. It doesn't have extensions. Like I said, there's no sync yet, right? Um, this stuff is coming. Um, this is just the first version. Um, it's got this neat uh, uh, feature here where it will um, it will blow away all of your history and uh, data. So if you just, you know, you want to, you know, the idea is you're using this, you care about privacy. Um, and starts up fresh and just, everything's gone, right? So it's this is this I think is going to be a useful product in the future. So we'll see. We're going to keep an eye on this one. I I, I never thought I've been using Brave now uh, full time for about a year, almost exactly a year, and I never once have thought maybe I should use something else. I look at this and I think uh, maybe you know. So we'll see. This is definitely one to watch. If you are going to use a browser that's not Microsoft Edge, I kind of have a final tip, which is. If you go into Task Manager, one of the views over here is startup apps. And I always sort this so you can see all the disabled apps and the enabled apps all together. Microsoft Edge runs this startup program uh, by default. If you're not using Microsoft Edge, you absolutely do not want to have that thing sitting in memory. So just right click it and disable it, right? And this way, Microsoft Edge isn't starting up every time you run Windows. And the reason it does that is so that when you actually use the browser, it appears to run a little faster than it would really. Um, there's a couple of other browsers that do things. I think Chrome might have a little startup application. I know Opera does, and uh, Brave does not to my knowledge, but um, Microsoft Edge actually absolutely does. So just disable that if you're gonna skip out on it like you should, <laughs> or like you might. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. I'm sorry, Firefox fans. Please don't email me. I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, I want to thank everyone from Club Twit who uh, keeps this channel going and um, everyone who watches. You can find out uh, more about the show and see new episodes at twit.tv slash HOW. And we will have new episodes every Thursday. Thank you for watching. Hey there, Scott Wilkinson here. In case you hadn't heard, Home Theater Geeks is back. Each week, I bring you the latest audio video news, tips and tricks to get the most out of your AV system, product reviews, and more. You can enjoy Home Theater Geeks only if you're a member of Club Twit, which costs seven bucks a month, or you can subscribe to Home Theater Geeks by itself for only $2.99 a month. I hope you'll join me for a weekly dose of Home Theater Geekitude.